But today's message is called Empower Church. And as we start, I want you to think about who I'm referring to as I list the many different aliases that this person has. For example, Breath of the Almighty. That's Job 33, 4. He's called also Power of the Most High. Luke 1, 35. He's also the Paraclete, the Helper, the Counselor, Comforter, and Advocate. And that's in John's chapters 14, 15, and 16. By now, you probably know who I'm talking about. But before I tell you who, let me give you some more names. His name is also Spirit, Eternal Spirit, Free Spirit, Good Spirit. I mean, this is all found in the Bible. Spirit of Christ, Spirit of Might, Spirit of adop Adoption, Spirit of Burning, Spirit of Judgment, Spirit of Glory, Spirit of Grace, Spirit of Knowledge, Spirit of Truth, Spirit of Wisdom, Spirit of Prophecy, and Spirit of Revelation. I mean, there's so many more names. There's over 30 names of this person. Who am I talking about? He's the Holy Spirit. Or affectionately known to some as the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and if you're thinking to yourself, what does Holy Spirit have anything to do with today's message about empowered church? Well, have you heard of this, this uh, term, empowered evangelicals? Anyone? Do you know who they are? It's us. The vineyard. Empowered evangelical. I don't know who came up with that phrase. But according to Vineyard USA website, it says, the vineyard seeks to blend the best of the evangelical traditions with their focus on Christ-like character and regard for the scriptures with the best of the Pentecostal and charismatic traditions of welcoming the empowering of the Holy Spirit for life, ministry, and acts of service. We empower evangelicals because we hold a good balance between the two. Between the Pentecostals and evangelicals. And that's why we are also called not only empowered evangelicals, but radical middle. Okay, this might be new terminology, but the more you're in the vineyard, you'll hear these terms more and more. A good balance between presence, the power, and, and the work of the Holy Spirit, the Pentecostal side, and the highest authority of truth, that is the word of God, God's revelation to us, the evangelicals. And that's who we are. So it's not either or, but both and for vineyard churches. Amen? So when we say empower, we mean the presence and the power and the, and, and the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's who we want to be here in, in, in Yorktown Vineyard. So empower church is spirit-led, spirit-filled, and supernatural kind of church. So empower church is really Holy Spirit church, which means today's message is really about the Holy Spirit. Did I lose you guys yet? <laughs> All right. So today, we're going to answer two simple questions. Questions are simple, but the answers are not simple at all. But that's okay, because the Holy Spirit will give us the wisdom and understanding. Why? Because He is the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. So first question, who is the Holy Spirit? He's the promised gift. Luke 24, 49 says, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. Jesus speaking here. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So Jesus is saying, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send a gift to you so that you're not left as orphans. He is also the third person of the Godhead, of the Trinity. So Holy Spirit is He, not it. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even though, here's the thing, Jesus is perfect God, right? He is also perfect man. And he lived the perfect life, perfect example of sinless life. But here's what John says in chapter six, 16, verse 7. Very interesting. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. Jesus is saying, it's better that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, 
the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Why is it better? I mean, we love Jesus. We like having him around. Why is it better that he goes away? It's because Jesus could only be at one place at a single moment. So he can't be seen hanging out with me and hanging out with Chris at the same time. It, 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 that can't be. He can't be, with, he can't be here and in, in, in another state. Jesus doesn't have a body double. He, it, it, there's no clone of Jesus. He could only be at one place at a single moment. Whereas Holy Spirit is everywhere at any time. As a matter of fact, he lives, and we sang the song, he lives in us, in each and every believer. Okay? So, so you see why it's better for, for Jesus to go away and to send the Holy Spirit? Jesus was with the disciples. The Holy Spirit is in us. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ was with his disciples, but the Holy Spirit is in us. And the beauty of it is that you can't see him, but we see the, the effects of his presence, of his work. It's like the wind that you can't see, but we hear the rustling of the leaves. And when we talk about who the Holy Spirit is, we have to also talk about what he does. Because when we recognize what he does, that also tells us who he is. Okay? So regarding what the Holy Spirit does, I can give you four things. And there's so much more than, than what, what I'm giving you. But four, I would say, very important aspects of what he does that we're going to talk about so that we have a better understanding of who he is. First of all, the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth in Christ Jesus. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I, my memory isn't always so good. <laughs> Especially short-time memory. And here, you have the Holy Spirit who's going to remind us. If we forget, you know, we're in a sin situation. Like, what do I do? God will, the Holy Spirit will help us remember, oh, this is what I need to do. I need to pray. I need to, to, to think about this. I need to, the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance what Jesus said, what the truth is, so that we can combat uh, those temptations in our lives. And we know that Jesus and truth are synonymous with each other, right? John 16, 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. So you could actually take the words truth, right, word truth, and replace with Jesus. And it still makes sense. When the spirit of Jesus comes, he will guide you into all Things up about Jesus. And the Holy Spirit doesn't speak in his own authority, but he only says what he hears from Jesus. So the Holy Spirit, what he does is he always points us to Jesus Christ. Okay? Secondly, he inspired the Bible. And this is the only time I'm going to use past tense because he's not... He, he no longer inspires any additional scripture today. So he already, the, the Bible is complete. So he inspired the Bible. Second Peter 10, 120 says, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. When prophets spoke, they didn't speak out of their own wisdom or knowledge. They spoke because the Holy Spirit came upon them to speak words that became scripture. So that's the Old Testament uh, inspiration. But you might say, well, what about New Testament? Is, is New Testament inspired word of God? Yes, absolutely. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture, New and Old Testament, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So if the Holy Spirit inspired the, the Bible, who better than to ask 
for for insight and understanding. Do you ever get? Do you ever read the scripture and like I have, I have no idea what they're saying? Why is this like? It sounds like it's different from what the scripture said before. Like, I'm confused. You know what? If the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible, then He will give you the understanding. You know that you could you could talk to Holy Spirit. We could talk to Father. We could talk to Jesus, Son. We could also talk to the Holy Spirit. So wh- when you start, before you start reading the Bible, say, Holy Spirit, I, I, I need help. I can't do this. My mind is not clear today. I need your wisdom. And, and a lot of times, you st- begin to see things in the Scripture that you didn't realize before. Like, wh- where did that come from? <laughs> the Holy Spirit. So pray and ask the Holy Spirit to, to help you understand the Word of God. Thirdly, he gives us spiritual gifts. He does. And what Paul does is, after listing a number of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, okay, and, and there are many gifts that Holy Spirit gives. gives. I'm not talking about your abilities or, or, or uh, talents. I'm talking about Holy Spirit. He gives you certain gifts, like gift of service, wisdom, gift of healing, gift of uh, proclamation, there's so many gifts, okay? Maybe, maybe a couple of dozen or more. Um, after he lists it, he says here, all these, all these gifts are empowered by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So we can pray for, for gifts. As a matter of fact, Paul tells us to, to, to eagerly seek spiritual gifts. But it's up to God, up to the Holy Spirit, what gifts you receive. Okay. And lastly, Holy Spirit empowers us. Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, you may abound in hope. So what it does is that here, the power of the Spirit produces joy, peace, hope. Joy, peace, hope. I mean, the way things are in this world, the craziness, you know, the suffering. Isn't this what we really need right now? We need joy. We need peace. We need hope. And that comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Acts 1 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here the power is for what? Making Christ known to others. You ever try to share Jesus like sort of like without any preparation, without prayer, just go, go, go into the cold, it's really hard, really difficult, okay? But here it says, God will give you the power through the Holy Spirit so that you can share Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit also convicts us. The Bible says he fellowships with us, he brings freedom for us, he intercedes for us, he fills us, and he bears fruit in us. And we're going to talk about the last two uh, in just a moment. Now, before I can talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that's the second uh, question, I want to deal with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and I want you to pay careful attention to the preposition. When people talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit, okay, I'm going to explain something and so that we're all... all all on the same page. When many Christians, when they talk about baptism, oh, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? They're talking about, a lot of times, the second blessing after you're saved, and later on, you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you're saved, you're, you know, you're a Christian, but then you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you speak in tongues, and now you are super Christian. Mm-mm, no. And I'm going to shock some, some of you, maybe. Step on some toes. <laughs> okay. The phrase, baptism of the Holy Spirit, is not in the Bible. Let me say that again. The phrase, baptism of the Holy Spirit, is not in the Bible. And if you find it, please show me because I can't find it. So in your note, write down, there is no such thing as baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Why? Let me explain. Because you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's a difference. You're baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that's in the Bible, in the New Testament, seven times. So the moment you get saved, call it reborn, uh, regenerated, redeemed, however you want to call your salvation moment, the moment you say yes to Jesus and, and he comes into your heart, the Holy Spirit okay, comes, that's baptism with the Holy Spirit. So if you want to avoid confusion, just say spirit baptism. Then that takes care of it, right? You don't have to worry about what preposition to use. But don't use baptism of the Holy Spirit. So where is the evidence that the baptism with the Holy Spirit occurs at the moment of salvation and not later on as a second blessing? Well, in the Bible. John 3, 5 says, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, capital S, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Entering the kingdom of God is salvation. So here, you have to be born of both water and the Spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For, one, for in one Spirit, we were all, all baptized into one body. All. Not some who are speaking in tongues. Not some who have the baptism of the, the Holy Spirit, which doesn't exist. But everyone, Jews or Greeks or slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. So if you say yes to Jesus, we're all baptized in or with Holy Spirit. Okay? You're not baptized later on when you're speaking in tongues. Because then this would not make sense. Romans 8, 9, you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. So, in order for us to belong to him, we have to have the Spirit for him to be in us, living in us. Okay? So, salvation, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit goes hand in hand together. Ephesians 1.13 In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. The, the moment you say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes. There, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. That very moment. And you're sealed with the mark of the Holy Spirit. So God knows who you are. God knows who belongs to him. There's, there's no second guessing. So you're baptized with the Spirit, but you have the seal and the mark of the Holy Spirit. And that can't be taken away. One more verse to look at. Mark 1.8. Um, John the Baptist speaking here. I have baptized you with water, but he, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That makes Jesus the baptizer. He's the one doing the baptism. He's the one performing the baptism with the Holy Spirit who becomes the means of baptism. So we're baptized with the Holy Spirit initially, once. That's everybody. And then filled from that point on. So when you're saved and baptized, you don't need to talk about another baptism. Hope that's clear. Then what is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit? Certainly not the tongues, the, the, the evidence is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's it. The, the, this, the gift of tongues is not evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit. By the way, it's no good if you have the gift of prophecy and gift of tongue and you have no fruit at all in your life. That, that, that's no good. I know a guy who is filled with the Holy Spirit who has every single fruit of the Spirit in his life, but he doesn't speak in tongues. He loves Jesus, and wherever he goes, he shares Jesus. I mean, this guy is overflowing with the presence of the Holy Spirit. So if we're, focus, if we're to focus on the filling, which is continual, and not on the baptism, which is once, when you get saved, then let's make sure we're asking the right question. Not how do you experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which doesn't exist, but rather how do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? And that's the second question for today. Remember, one spirit baptism, many fillings. 
Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, for English majors here, you appreciate this. The word filled, okay, the verb filled is in present, passive, and imperative form. <laughs> what does that mean? Present is continual. Passive, it is done to us. And imperative, it is not optional. So after the initial baptism, the word we need to use is the filling of the Holy Spirit. And we need to be filled continually. And is what God does for us. And this is important because if you are to be in power church and for us to, to live our lives to the fullest for God, and this is what I was talking about in the beginning, that life is meaningless without God and life is short and there's much work to do. So let's, let's do it with the help of the Holy Spirit who is with us 24-7. Because he can, he not only lives in us, he can fill us and empower us as well. And remember, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit 100% all the time. All the time. But you and me, we, we tend to leak. <laughs> Not 100%. So it's like, you know, it can fluctuate. Okay? But how can we stay filled with the Holy Spirit? Luke four one. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. And the next uh, 12 verses, we read of, of his temptation in the wilderness, in the desert, where he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, no food, no water. He was being tempted by, by the, the devil. And then, listen to this. When he's coming out of the desert, Verse 14 says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And I, I didn't notice this before. He goes full of the Holy Spirit. Okay? He, he spends time, 40 days, and he comes out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And he says, And a report about him went out through all the surrounding country. Now, this is a side note. This is a bonus for you guys. If you're going through... A, a real challenging season. I am. I don't know about you guys. But if you are, and you feel like you're in a desert place, you're struggling a lot, there's a lot of hardship your way, be of courage because when you come out of it, you're going you're gonna to function in the power of the Holy Spirit. God's going to drink that time, season of wilderness. He's going to mold you. He's going to shape you. He's going to strengthen you. And when you come out of that season, and I'm waiting for, for that season to come, I'm, I'm tired of, you know, I, I know God is doing things, and he is working in my heart, even now. But as I come out of it, I believe I'm going to operate not only in the fullness, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. You know the word power in Greek is dunamis? It's, a, it's a, a, the, sort of the root word for dynamite. So he's saying, we're going to... Jesus came out, returned in the, the explosive power of the Spirit. And I, I, I'm praying and hoping, Lord, God, as I go through this season, help me to come out in this explosive dynamite power of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and that's my prayer for, for our, our, our church as well. So how do we get filled? First of all, and this might be too simple. You might say, oh, yeah, no duh. Ask. Ask. Um, ask, seek, and knock. Now, people use this passage regarding prayer in Matthew 7. Yeah, you know, when you come to God, make sure you ask, you, you seek, you knock. God will answer your prayers. Okay, but read what it says in the book of Luke. It's slightly different, and the context is different, and, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Luke 1, 11, 9, and I tell you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Okay? Seek, and you will find. I mean, Luke is really saying the same thing twice. And he says it the third time. Knock, and it will be opened to you. And verse 10, for everyone who asks, receives. He's saying it again. For the fourth time, 
fifth time, the and one, one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. So he says it six times in different ways to ask. Right? Verse 11. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to good, give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? In, in Matthew 7, He says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? So difference is good things versus Holy Spirit. So here it's saying, ask for the Holy Spirit and He will give it to us. The context is in the Holy Spirit. Now, if you pray that prayer, be careful, because he will answer it. Because you want to be filled? God's going to trim your life. God's going to work on things that need to be dealt with. God's going to begin to, to expose you know, some, some unforgiveness in your life. God's going to begin to purify you. Because the more he does that, the greater filling of the Holy Spirit. So, yeah, yes, you can ask. But remember what you're asking for. Second of all, if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit to the overflowing, obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. And I say obedience because disobedience, sin, and rebellion will all deplete the presence of the Holy Spirit. He never goes away. But the power of the Holy Spirit will be weakened when you are living in disobedience, in sin, and rebellion. So we need to obey in order to be full of the Spirit and His power. Remember, Jesus only, he, he did, he only did what He saw the Father doing, right? That's perfect obedience. He only did what He saw the Father doing. Nothing more, nothing less. And when we live in that kind of obedience, we'll be filled just as Jesus was filled. Back in 1994, Sue and I, um, we love each other. You can see we're a lovely couple. <laughs> we marry uh, 30, we're going on 31 <laughs> years of marriage. But it wasn't so good in the beginning. Um, because she was, we're both Koreans, but she was adopted, so she, she did, grew up in a different culture. And I, 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 I was in Korea, I was born there, I uh, came here when I was uh, ten, 10 years old. And so there was cultural clash. So when we got married, there was a lot of differences. And when she was pregnant, eight months, I mean, we're literally for three years fighting with each other. Talk about divorce constantly. And one, one day, one night after a huge fight, we sat and said, what are we doing? This is crazy. We're bringing this child into this world, into this situation. We said, something's got to change. And we were going to church at the time, but we weren't Christians. So we, we decided, hey, let's seek out the pastor and, and ask for some counsel and prayer. And we found out that there was a prayer meeting that was going on every week. There was another couple who had a broken marriage trying to reconcile. And a few uh, singles, one with, with depression, one with low self-esteem. I mean, a bunch of like <laughs> broken up people. But we came together and started to pray together. And after a while... Uh, there was a, a fasting retreat. Obviously, my wife, you know, she's eight months pregnant. She couldn't fast. But I was fasting and I was praying. And very, for, the, for the very first time, I realized as I'm praying that I was a sinner. See, before that, I, I never realized, I never thought of myself as a sinner. And if you're not a sinner, guess what? You don't need a Savior. So I repented. I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. I need you. I need you in my life. Please forgive me. As so I start to bawl and, you know, it's not coming out of my nose and I'm on my knees and just crying out to God. And, and then all of a sudden, I prayed a prayer that I don't know where it came from. Probably the Holy Spirit. But I prayed a prayer, um, and I'll tell you what the prayer was. But up to that point, I knew the Father, I knew the Son, but I didn't know the Holy Spirit. And there was this fear. You know, when you have uncertainty about certain things, you have fear. And I was confused. And, and, you know, I've seen things at churches where there's Holy Spirit, you know, craziness. And I'm like, no, I don't want that. 
But that night, for the first time, you know, not only did I say sorry to God, but I prayed this prayer. I said, God, I don't know. I know the Father. I know the Son. I don't know the Holy Spirit. But if you're going to give me clarity and, and, and take away my fear, Lord, I want the gift of tongue. Now, I didn't know what that was. I had no idea. But I prayed that prayer. And as soon as I uh, ended that prayer, um, I started to s speak in what sounded like gibberish. But the pastor came over and said, that's the gift of the, uh, the Holy Spirit. That's the gift of tongue. Keep praying because it's the Holy Spirit praying through you. So I kept praying and praying and praying. And my wife is in the corner watching me. It's like, why is he getting all the blessing? <laughs> She's just sitting there. You know, her stomach was, I mean. So she started praying to God like, I, I want some of that. And so she, as she was praying, she said she saw a face of every emotion possible. And it was the face of God. And she heard, don't you know I love you, Sue? And that's the first time she realized that God knows her by name. And that just broke her. And so we got saved same night. And when I was there repenting, I got saved. I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. And God began to fill me. Now, if you think that's, you know, something unique to my experience, no. Whenever a person says yes to Jesus, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay? You're saved. And you, God begins to fill you with his spirit. That's all of us. I just asked for a gift of tongue, so I received that gift uh, from the beginning. And, and remember, gift of tongue is really for your benefit. Every other gift is for uh, blessing others, but gift of tongue is more for yourself, where, where it blesses you. Because when the Bible says to pray continuously without ceasing, how many of you pray 24-7? <laughs> it's hard, right? But if you pray in the spirit, you can pray even when you're working, when you're driving, in the spirit, in your mind. And after that night, God changed me. All my fears went away. Fear of people, fear of public speaking. I mean, everything went away. And God began to build our marriage. I mean, incredible. We went from almost divorce to just really coming together, trusting in the Lord, and seeking God together. He changed me personally. He changed my marriage. And as the group that the broken up people, the ragtag of, of misfits, continued to pray, God took the church of 20 and increased to 200 in two years. And we became the empowered church. That is my prayer for us. To be functioning, operating in the power and the presence and the work of the Holy Spirit. Because I, it's not just me, but I hear from many of you guys that God is in the cusp of doing something big. And we need to be empowered to do that. We need to cry out to God. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to fill this church, fill each and every one of us. So that we can be the church that God calls us to be. Amen? So three things. Next steps. And I just put down three asks. asks. One, ask for clarity. If you still have sort of misunderstanding or confusion about who the Holy Spirit is. And some churches don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. Ask for clarity. Ask God. God, I want to know who the Holy Spirit is. I want to have a relationship with him as much as I do with the Father and the Son. Secondly, ask for spiritual gifts. And we, we can do that. It's up to him to give whatever gifts, but we can ask for gifts. Okay, and we're going to talk about this on another sermon, but gifts that can build each other up and for us to go out and, and, and share, the, share Christ with others. So we need gifts. Okay? So pray for spiritual gifts. And the thirdly, ask for filling of the Holy Spirit in prayer. Again, Luke 11 tells us to ask. A lot of times we don't have because we don't ask. But remember, it is a dangerous prayer. So we're going to respond. 
and I've asked uh, Beth to prepare a song to, to respond to. And it's just time to, to reflect on the message. And some of you, God is already speaking to you. Holy Spirit is already on you. And so let his spirit continue to minister to you and speak to you. And uh, the song, you can sing with it, just meditate on it, um, pray with it, and then I'll end with prayer. But after that, again, I'll be available for time of ministry. If anyone needs prayer for anything, especially regarding Holy Spirit, I'll be here uh, after the message to pray with you.